now that we're back for part two, it's time to make a map on the heels of the new Tiefling Warlock that we made. Now, you may remember from last week, we ended up making a party about political intrigue uh, going around a region that we're modeling somewhat after the Mediterranean. And we put an island in the middle of this area. And uh, Dark Wolf suggested, well, maybe it should look like a mask. And as I was wearing a mask earlier, um, as we can see... Whoop. That kind of fits the, uh, the theme. And so we created the island of Mesomasca. It is a little spoopy, isn't it? I can change it if uh, there's something a little bit... Uh... Oh, you know what? Docks District. There we go. We'll do this. Okay. And so... Hey, Delcorin, thank you very much. And so we created Mesomasca here. It looks like a mask. It has two lakes. It's split down uh, the center by a little bit of a mountain ridge that you can see. Boom. Here's the region we made. Now let's zoom in a bit. And there we go. Now, keep in mind that this area here is also a part of Mesomasca, or at least that's what they're claiming. Though, I'm sure that that's going to be a hot point of contention for these two countries here. And, you know, as for the volcano, maybe that as well, if anyone wanted to claim it. We can see from the uh, the map that we made last week that Mesomasca is by a deep water area that is, uh, it, it's kind of on like a bowl or something that rises quickly. So really, this whole side of Mesomasca is on, you know, medium then to deep water. And then it gets shallow on the other side of it here. And by shadow, I mean, or shallow, I mean, like, you know, within a hundred feet, something along those lines. We generated a couple stats about Mesomasca. For its races, there's a racial majority that are the conquerors of the place. So the major race were humans, the minor race were tieflings. So the humans were conquering tieflings. Pardon me. Oh, goodness. I have to breathe, too, not just drink tea. The ruler status, it's actually a mysterious, anonymous cabal of people. Notable traits is that Mesomasca has a sinister reputation. It is known for delicious cuisine. It seems to be on the brink of war. Now, the region as a whole is on the brink of war. Is this the brink that we're talking about? Because the as uh, Bobicus was developing this external threat, um, he said that the human it was an empire of humans and tieflings, and that was even before we randomly rolled the races that exist in Mesomasca. And so maybe there's a link between the invading empire and Mesomasca. Mm, pardon. You had to redo your BT TV settings again. Well, hopefully that means that all your, um, you know, all your Franker Z's and whatnot will work for you, Delcorin. Oh, going into the dungeon, you triggered a mimic. Oh, can you do it with advantage? Oh, pardon me. Goodness, sorry about that. Fourteen plus two. Oh yeah, you slay that mimic for three hundred and fifty exp. There we go. Enjoy. Also, it looks like Peru came back to life as a female dwarven cleric after losing to a random wandering monster. Peru also lost a lot of intelligence. <laughs> Not quite ready to risk it all in the Underdark, I understand. Jose, welcome. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Jose. <laughs> um, and I, I've, I've spent a little bit of time in paint. Uh, Jose goes into the tomb. H hello? 
Deep inside the tomb, a vampire appears. Only a 14 or greater can defeat it. You attack with disadvantage, adding a plus 3 modifier. It's worth uh, 500 EXP if defeated. Alright, exclamation point 2D20. Jose, do you have what it takes? 11 and 19. Oh, you just squeak it in there, even with disadvantage. Looks like the vampire was going to get the upper hand. You made a feint to the right, and you ended up um, you ended up putting a stake through its heart. Congratulations. Big risk, big reward. All right. So Mesomasca, oh, people may fight over the volcano. There are lots of minerals in lava. Yeah, that it could very well be a hotly contested point. <laughs> All right, let's uh <laughs> Did our Tiefling have any showy spells? Uh, I probably. Um, it could levitate at will because of one of its uh, one of its uh, incantations. By the way, Dark Wolf uh, took it upon herself to do a bit of a uh, a sketch, not quite the bird's eye view of Mesomasca from here, you know, like the satellite view, um, but she came down into a little bit more of an isometric one. And it looks like she came down on this side of the mountains, right over right over here. So we can reflect some of the work that she has and um, and we'll we'll go from there. <clears throat> I'll keep this over here for reference as we're as we're building things. You're still debating if you toss my living enemies in a pit of lava or not. <laughs> They'd go quickly. I mean, and plus Del Corn, we're talking about that whole Kalima sort of a, a a thing that was going on. You know, if you have the still beating heart in your hand and he's being lowered into the lava and it catches on fire. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oops, let's go back to that. There we go. First things first, we need to kind of sketch out the area here. And we can have the map take up most of our available area. And if we don't like it, we can always adjust it from there. I don't know. It might be a little bit difficult to see for you all, because I want to make a, a beachy perimeter around Mesomasca first. Like, we put in a significant beach on the one side, because most of the water and weather is hitting here before, kind of, it falls into the sea on this side. There we go. I think that works. Which means that we can fill in the color over here. So I think that's what we were doing. Let's see, over here we had a lot more beach.
go. Now let's fill that in. Fill that in. Making good progress. There we go. Let's fill this in. Ah, oh, nice, 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 nice. Mesomasca has two eyes, two lakes that are split from the water that collects up in the in the mountainous area here. Fill these in. There we go. And we have a bit of a brow, but this is also reflecting more of a, like a, a wooded area. A lot of trees are growing up around here. There we go. Nice. go put a little bit more detail in there now what was indicated by dark wolf in the picture that she shared as she envisioned mesomasca there was a waterfall that was coming down uh, from the the peaks up here that looked like they've been collecting a little bit of snow and that's perfectly fine we never really indicated how tall the mountains were. It is definitely part of a big mountain chain going north and south. And there's nothing wrong with uh, having this ridge start up higher and kind of descending down as it gets more towards the, the beak end, you know, the, the beak end of the of the mask here. Because you can almost see, right, we're, we're basing this on a mountain range. It's starting around here. And so that's fine. This could be up here, like a, a glacial area. Um, so that this actually collects rainwater or it melt and freeze and it's pouring down in uh, it's flowing through and out to this lake and then she's also seeing where there's probably some other um, either like an artesian spring coming from meltwater that's going underneath the, the ground and popping back up or this is just mountain lake uh, like a, a little river that's coming down here towards the end of the nose along the strip and that's perfectly fine as well um And in all honesty, these lakes will probably continue out to the sea, which uh, would give us uh, kind of an interesting, um, kind of an interesting effect because it almost looked like a crying mask. So we kind of say that there's like a little bowl right around here. Whoops. There we go. This comes down and spills in here. Remember, we got to think about geology, geography. Um, there's a lot of different disciplines that we can give to our D&D &D creation. There we go. Whoops. <laughs> oh, come on, work with me. Oh, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's just not, uh, 
Are you just not connected? There we go. There we go. And so here, maybe uh, maybe it flows through some of the farmland, and they use this patch out here as the as the tear kind of goes out to the lake or to the uh, to the rest of uh, the rest of the sea. So as the mountains are descending down, this is going to be raised, and so it's going to be pushed out this way to the flatter area until we get to sea level right around here on the on the coast. There we go. The land weeps. And then we can do something like that to show some brackish water. Brackish is a mix of salt water and fresh water. So if this is getting pushed out this way, this way, maybe it's also pushing down a little bit. If the, if this is a lower elevation than it is up up top, this we could have another sort of like a streaming set of tiers following kind of the lay of the land this way until they're finally pushed out to sea here. And then, boom, on a nice little, a little area here, and a little area here. Whoops. It's kind of reminding me of, uh, and I, I grew up in Florida. I was born in, oh, come on. I was born and raised there, so it's, it's nice to go back and visit and... You know, to hear the songs of the sea and uh, get out onto the beaches and just kind of oh, do that thing again. There we go. Jose, second time I get both this advantage and success. Peru says people may fight over the volcano, lots of minerals, okay. Oh yeah, and that's the it's a, a point of hot contention. It's a great place to toss your enemies. Did our tiefling okay, have any showy spells? Okay, yeah, we, we haven't done that yet. We can go back and do spells kind of in the casual part three uh, downtime. Um still debating okay, yeah, that's the Kalima, not quite the scale. I could it could be quick if just tossed in, but it'd be unimaginable pain. Yeah, you know, um, on that note, Dell, I will say that uh, you, it's easy to find videos of a lot of different things on the internet. And if you are curious, there are people who do dumb things and are in places that they shouldn't be, and there are consequences for that combination. Um, I will just leave it at that, but if you're curious about what happens if people get too close, you can find it. That's up, that's that's up to you. <laughs> um, bubonic, what movie? Uh, that's uh, Temple of Doom. That that happens. Uh, Pouty lips. Hey, Pouty. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just getting back to chat. I was uh, I was like super intense using my uh, using my mouse here to draw some rivers. Going to fight a Nalfenshi next session, and I'm level 8. I don't remember what level uh, those uh, those types of devils are, but I do know that they are rather no uh, notorious. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun doing it, and sometimes learning about your enemy beforehand in a non-metagaming way is a good build-up to an adventure. 
So in some form or fashion, hopefully you've been studying your books. You might get a holy artifact out from uh, or on loan from a, a temple of some kind, and you might uh, you might have a chance at that. I'd love to hear how that fight goes, Pouty Lips. Um, it's that's a rather uncommon enemy to encounter. Uh, Del, yeah, in Temple of Doom, no, they'd pass out rather fast. Why am I devils advocating for throwing people in lava? <laughs> yeah, that's one of them, but I know I saw it in a fantasy movie once, too. Uh, Sarasota, Florida, Romonger. Yeah, I was born in, I was born in Florida. Really, King? Well, enjoy Siesta Key. I can't go swimming in Lake Erie for a little while, but you can go wading out on Siesta Key anytime you want. Have fun digging up uh, sand fleas or coquinas and uh, all the other fun stuff you can do out there. <laughs> do you want to be on stream? No? Okay. She was considering it. Yes, I was I was born in Sarasota, Florida, and I lived there for uh quite a while. Well, I guess not that's not the case now. I'm I'm really like I'm older. Correct. I'm not in Sarasota currently. Um if I were, then, hey, that'd be cool. We can, I don't know, go to uh, whatever the local hotspots are now. Um, go to St. Armand Circle. Hey, how about that? We can go uh, We can go on the merry-go-round together, King, on St. Armand Circle. All right, we have a lot of basics in. Now let's put that back over here. I thought all the roller rinks are closed now. <laughs> now, our weird locale is this canyon containing a dragon's graveyard. For what we're doing, it's... Mesomask is claiming it. Is it really developed? Oh, hey, you did decide to make it. Thank you for joining us. Hey, what's this? What's this? She's thinking. We can go to the 50 Margarita places here. Not sure if that merry go is still there. Oh, yeah, it's been a while. Um, How long have you lived in Sarasota, King? There might be a couple places you could... Uh... It's a very sad... Hey, oh, no, off the keyboard. Oh, my gosh. No... Don't do bad things. Uh, King, do you remember on St. Armand's Circle a restaurant called Hemingway's? Or there was also a restaurant called the Sawmill Inn? gone for a few years and then came back. Ah. Uh, that was something that uh, that was something that my father owned and ran for a while.
It's still there according to Google? Oh, okay. Well, that's, that's good to know. And we'll make kind of a topographical map here as we as we descend down into the into the deep water here. Something like this could be important for something like this could be important for our great old one warlock, who may or may not have a patron residing in the depths. Oh, the Columbia. Yeah, that's a good one, too. And uh, you make sure to get some ice cream over at the Big Olaf. All right. So we have a lot of the basics that are set up. We're not going to put this dragon graveyard in that's down below here. Uh, this is surrounded by like a wall of igneous rock, right? There's a big volcanic slash meteoric event that occurred. And since then, this has kind of been filled in and it's kind of like lush and tropical. Um, and it's also a dragon graveyard. Ooh. Though what we can do, because we're going to focus on our campaign for the week taking place in this location, is to fill it out a little bit more. Mm, pardon me. Um, I think an interesting idea would be if the island has an unofficial split between the tieflings and the humans. And... This could be represented in a couple different ways. Uh, there are many masks that feature black and white as themes. We could even go blue and red. For instance, we can say that if there's if the racial majority are conquerors, we have humans and tieflings. We have blue bloods and red bloods. Now what's interesting is if it's run by a cabal, blue and red make purple. Purple is usually the color of royalty. So we can put a whole lot of symbolism into this land and into this place um, through those kinds of means. And that would also mean that as a, um, as a representation of the island, each one would be developed in different ways. So we'd have, uh, you know, we'd have the, probably the, this side of the island would have been uh, developed more. It's on the open sea, a lot more ports. Look, we have two rivers. Um, we have some gra some water kind of like coming up from the mountains here. And this is like old town. This is like, you know, old Hispaniola. If you go down to, you know, uh, the other like colonial era times, if you go to uh, Peru or Panama, some other places like that. And so this would feature tiefling architecture, tiefling culture, that kind of a thing. Then we have the humans who came in and conquered and are, you know, they want this big arable farmland for their plans and what they're doing. And so on each side of the island, we have two different cultures. We have, uh, we have a more modern looking um, human one. And then we have like the old cultural uh, tiefling side. One is the red side, one is the blue side, and yet there's this cabal that rules over both of them. You know, the nobles, the, you know, the, the violet bloods or the purple bloods or whatever you'd want to call them in that case. I was making your tiefling purple, so such, such symbolism. Hey, yeah, there you go, Dark Wolf. <laughs> uh, so hopefully, the, like, if, if these ideas are resounding with you, let me know. If you think, nah, 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 let, let's try something better. Hey, that's, that's perfectly fine. We are open. We are open to ideas. I think we can even put kind of like a kind of a last. Whoops, not that color. But kind of like a last little ditch one, kind of down here. And it can come out like some of the. You get a lot of jetties and other things like that. There we go. Uh, and so this would really allow us to feature two different parts and to have our characters, because we can still run a political campaign just on Mesomasca. There's the greater influence of this 
outside force pushing in. And the people here could very well be responsible for inviting or instigating this empire to come in and arguably reclaim it. Or what if the, the conquering humans were actually from this empire, but maybe they were exiled by it. And so they came to Mesomasca and they colonized it and it became its own thing. Well, now, you know, um, granddaddy wants, uh, wants to see the grandkids. And so he's coming for them and he has to go through the other lands in order to reclaim the mask, you know, sort of like, oh, the, the mask is the last thing that's worn as we, uh, you know, as we make this land. Actually, you know what? I could probably even do this. I'm only wearing earphones normally. Here we go. Now I'm, now I'm in the mix. You have your character sheet from a couple years ago. Oh, what did you make a couple years ago, Jam Jam? We are most likely going to be getting development along the river. Actually, i got to fill in another part here. There we go. And so we're going to have a city kind of straddling the river here. And then we're probably going to have one that's going to be kind of on the inside on this on this uh, crook here. Built just on the inside here. There we go. Probably have kind of a, a port or a fort or something that doesn't have to rhyme with either of those out at the tip to kind of enforce naval law, tax, tax stuff, that kind of a thing. So we go there. And it's built on this rock. It might even span out a little bit. And there might be some kind of a bridge, almost like the bridge between the Florida Keys, that's uh, going out this way to this little uh this little rock nubbin maybe that's uh maybe that's the prison or something where they they send prisoners of mesomasca now the humans uh would definitely be coastal though a lot of the ports are coming in here so this would be more for out uh for outgoing because let's look at the grander picture of things All right so people are coming in they might be coming this way they might be coming up this way um maybe even coming around here so we'd have to think, well, is anyone going to develop on this side? Especially if we have some deep water ports on this, on this portion of the island. Did everyone have pie today? <laughs> Just a tip. Uh, I did not have pie specifically, Ro, unfortunately. Mm. I'll have to, uh, maybe I can get a, a day-old pie at the bakery tomorrow and, uh, it, and enjoy kind of a retroactive uh, fashion. Yep, Plague Doctor. I just, uh, it doesn't have the doesn't have a bottom so that I can put flowers in the nose so that it smells better when I'm treating infected patients. So because the ports are more for the tieflings and what they have going on on this side of the island, right? we're making a culture, remember. So now we have development more in the forest and around the lake, and that's what the, the human population is really going to be focusing on here. And so now we have a city that is just built up kind of in in this fashion here yeah. 
And there probably would be some kind of like at least a little a little area out this way. Probably straddling the river, going that way. You know, this isn't like two miles from one to the other. You know, we're, I, I'm not necessarily saying that this place is the size of Ohio either. Uh, I mean, that's a convenient scale for me. And there's probably some kind of like a little a lookout or some kind of like a little naval or some little post right up here. Maybe it's just a really well-developed fishing village. But there's our there's our civilization we've we've graded in. There's a difference between an urban and non-urban campaign or is there? Um not necessarily. Um you can still hunt and stalk people through a city. Oh, Dell didn't have any pie today either. You can still hunt and stalk people through a city. Um, this could affect rangers and druids a little bit more, but eh, it's still you can modify it. Still, it's still able to be gone through. Um, you could arguably make an urban ranger or or an urban druid if you really wanted. It's just what resources are around you, or if you make a character that is, you know, bent on fighting, or, you know, carries around, it like, wears armor, and has a sword, and all this other stuff, not all the time walking through a city is it appropriate or discreet to wear full plate armor and have a sword and shield on you at all times in an urban environment. People out in the countryside might say, okay, well, look, there's bandits, or he's hunting someone, or he must be official, and he needs to be protected. But it's it's a more of a big cultural change between country and city. I mean, just use your own experiences. Have you grown up in a big city? Have you been out to the countryside? Have you seen the architectural differences, the cultural differences, um, political or religious differences, things along those lines? And so you're getting kind of the same thing, but different. If that makes sense. So I'm getting... I think that these are going to be like low density housing and commercial. This is going to be high density over here. These are going to be little military bases on the tips. And then this is going to be like a low density kind of like a fishing village or, or like a little trade post that's on this side of Mesomasca right over here. In fact, this could even be the port. Here, let's zoom in a little bit. This can even be the port that takes people down here to these islands. What's my ideas on an island hopping campaign? From which perspective? As a DM, you mean, Romonger? So as a DM, if you're going island hopping, it's a good way if you want to introduce some little specialty cultural flares, uh, if you want to introduce some kind of, um, if you want to introduce some kind of uh, minor cultural differences, think, uh, I don't know if you have ever been on a cruise down to the Bahamas or, you know, like in the Caribbean, a lot of the islands function similarly because of the inherent geography and weather patterns. Each of the islands has its own set of laws and cultures and norms that you can pursue on those islands. And this is a kind of a way to just show, oh, there's this island features this and this island features this as a people, as a religion, as species of monsters or other animals. Um, you know, we, we, you even get one like, you know, the... Um, the uh, uh, oh, heck, what was it from Jurassic Park? It was like the Isla del Muerte, uh, something along those lines. How is it so lush and filled with uh, plants and fresh water and all this, and why doesn't anyone build on there? Well, because you're going to get eaten by raptors. 
Well, if you can put that aside, then yeah, it's a wonderful place to be. But who'd suspect that you go to this island, or, or what, uh, Isla Nublar or something like that was the first one? But you go to that island and, you know, it's it's a dream. Well, there's a reason why it's a pristine dream. So you can build little microcosms of culture and, and kind of have fun with the way that things happen uh, here and there. Um, Final Fantasy X kind of does a good job of doing something like that. Because Final Fantasy X is kind of like... Um, it's kind of set in like a Neo Bahamas, uh, like a Neo Jamaica kind of a setting. At least that's how it came across to me. So you can do fun stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Now, this is the overlying... Um, this is, in fact, you're going to get an example of this row. This is the overlying state of Mesomasca as a whole. If we don't look at the divide between uh, humans and tieflings, if we don't look at um, at these things, in fact, we can say that they have delicious cuisine because look at that. They are a hub. People going into and out of Mesomasca, west, east, north, south, it's in the middle of it all. And you better believe that if this was like some conquerors, maybe people who had money and influence, and uh, and the tieflings are running the ports and whatnot here, they're getting spices and fish and cattle and all kinds of fresh stuff that has been harvested and sent south, uh, collected from the sea and sent up, grown uh, on these lands themselves, either, whether in the mountains or in the freshwater lakes. Um, there's a lot that can be done here. And so the reason why they're known for their delicious cuisine, it blends. Um, it blends these refined, these blue-blooded human tastes. It refines these very, like, primitive, you know, hot fire sauces and peppers of the tieflings because they can take it. So you have high taste and low taste, and they've combined, and they've come together with access to all the ingredients all the ingredients from each of these other uh, each of these other regions pass by and they leave their mark on Mesomasca. So Mesomasca is like a, a more of a metropolitan um, area. It has its own culture and identity. It is its own place apart from here. But it is a fusion of so many of them. As a player, you're looking forward to the hot native girls in coconut tops. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's uh, you know different uh, different cultural norms. And if the weather's nice, uh, whatever the laws and culture say, <laughs> it is what it is, right? Okay. Having a bunch of islands with different cultures is an easy way to make a world. Yep. Oh, Wind Waker. Hey, yeah, that's true, King. That's a very good parallel. If we want to name the territories of Mesomasca, we can do so. I think there's going to be the Western Territories, the Eastern Territories, the, as the populated ones. And then we have the nor uh, Northern Territories and the Southern, uh, the Southern Territories, which aren't as populated. They're more mixed, right? It's military. It's whatever random fishing villages, countryside. People don't really care because they're not centers of culture, but they are centers of, of where people are living and farming. They're probably mining in the in the mountains, that kind of a thing. What color is for tieflings, blue or red? Red. So with the humans being uh, the rulers and the miner uh, being the, the conquered, the tieflings, we have blue bloods and red bloods. You know, I'm a red-blooded tiefling. And, uh, and then this mysterious anonymous cabal, uh, they're known as if you want to call them like royal bloods or violet bloods or something along those lines. <clears throat> so each of these regions themselves can then be broken down into, um, pardon, into what they are, who they are. 
Uh, for instance, in the West, we do know, um, like, so the the racial majority are conquerors, and and that's I think going to be overriding because this is we're not building a huge nation here. That this is a limited island. Um, and we can keep the major human and tiefling. We can. This is even an opportunity uh, for us to splash in something else. Maybe some halfling refugees have come up, and they're primarily staying in the west. Uh, they can mine in the mountains, and they could do farming. But realistically, I think the political climate wouldn't allow for it. You've got all these countries neck and neck at each other, and their only real means of forging a war path into another state is through the sea and using Mesomask as a foothold. So it'd probably be neutral territory. Yeah, uh, well, and uh, I don't think that would mean that they'd forbid uh, mining and farming, because if nothing else, that means that it's a breadbasket and it's a war chest that can supply these other countries also. I do agree that they would be neutral, and they'd probably be kind of, they have a sinister nature, so they're probably making a bunch of devil's deals, um, literally and metaphorically, I guess you could say. Um so I, I do agree with you, King, that Mesomasca in this conflict, which doesn't help the presumptive nature of Mesomasca being in league with the Empire. It's, you know, it's the arms dealer that's selling to both sides. Um, but I, I do agree with that. Now, when I type current calamity here, this isn't an island affecting one. This is, this region of Mesomasca is experiencing a trouble, which is making this whole brink of war for the entirety of Mesomasca even more exacerbated. Everyone would want a piece of land so there'd be very little room for it. And because everyone is there, they'd be rolling in heavily urban areas and trade. I don't know if I... Well, what are you woeing about, King? A weasel or a ferret just ran by. Like, in your house? <laughs> At your feet? Or what are you talking about? Big hopping snake uh, mammal? Outside of the window. Oh. Alright, we're going to cover that up for a minute. We're going to bring up the dice roller. We can even put something like the governor's status of each of these areas. Omit the fifth. Hey, welcome back. It's nice to have you in chat. Once you've, uh, once you have this world builder, are you gonna DM the game? Uh, I'm not opposed to doing it. We've made a whole lot, a whole lot of um, homebrew content for it, and we're making maps and we're making cultures and all these notes. So yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to running in this homebrew, channel made world. Omit. I'm imagining a six way civil war centered around the Manhattan Island. <laughs> <laughs> the Florida part, yeah. Warlock has a pet ferret. 
Imagine how full of buildings that is if you're still lost on my point. Mm. It'd probably be a long-tailed weasel. I'm going to roll 4d20. 6, 12, 9, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. We're going to do this again. Eight, fourteen, six, seven. Do it again. Twelve, thirteen, six, twelve. The current regional calamity. Seven six one six. And is there going to be something weird going on? Maybe. Maybe not. We can look this up, though. Now, do you want weird locales in every part? Not necessarily, or at least not significant. Um, this is kind of DM discretion. We're fishing for ideas, seeing what pops up. Maybe instead of weird locales, it's natural locales. There's just, um, I don't know. It's a, there's no super natural connection, but one of the stones looks like a face and that's just, a, you know, uh, it's a thing that happens like the old man on the mountain kind of a thing. Nine, fifteen, three, fourteen. There we go. All right, let's find out what this stuff means. And if, if we want to, you know, massage it, if we want to move things around, uh, have the island equal out in region uh, in under the umbrella that we generated before of what the uh, of what Mesomasca as a whole is like. That could be very interesting. Very good for warlocks and some other types of casters or mystery solvers. 15. A haunted hill or barrow mound. Ooh, okay. North is a 3. A wild magic zone. Uh, that, that can very well work with uh, what we had happen. And a weird locale number 14 is also a haunted hill or oh, barrow mound. Or the Florida weasel. Where I live in New York, we have minks. Mink fur is worth $80 on eBay if you can prove how you collected the hide. My brother ran one over and had to report it to the state um, department of... Uh, usually, isn't that like a department of wildlife? or it is, Are we talking department of corrections or something? Or... Oh, no, like, like environmental something or another? Or, like, it's not fish and game. Well, whatever it is, Bubonic. And they gave him a letter of proof so he could sell it. Okay. Ro, do you have any work-in-progress photos of this model that's not a mini anymore? <laughs> Uh, Omit's asking, is this out of the DM handbook or Xanathar's guide? This is out of the, this is out of the DMG, Omit. We're on page uh, 109 here, if you wanted to follow along. There's random stats for producing wildlife, uh, or like wilderness areas, cities, how things are getting along. And now that we've finished on that page, we can come over here. And now here's settlements. And here are charts that we're rolling on for uh, the, what the settlements are like. Up here, state DEC is like Uber police. They can pull you over for speeding and do things even the state troopers wish they could do. Huh. Governor status is six. A feared tyrant. 
in the West. In the East, we have a governor that's... Uh, ooh. Well, I think, uh, I think I know where our, uh, our cabal might be ruling from. Nine. A weakling manipulated by others. Now remember, as DMs, this is giving us a, uh, this is giving us an idea for how we can run the different regions of Mesomasca, where this uh, sample campaign that we're building towards is going to take place. We can now start imagining characters. If this region is ruled by a weakling manipulated by others, do the PCs know that? Probably not. Could they figure out by talking to some people and getting rumors? Maybe. Could they get proof? Especially, what if what if the governor who's running the north of the island, right, who's running this checkpoint, is a weakling? So maybe he's taking bribes, or maybe some pirates are uh, are actually behind these scenes and are running uh, and are running this area like a thassilocracy. So just doing prep work. I've been cutting plastic card for the last three hours. I'm really happy that you can just like jam out and chill and work to this stream, bro. That that means a lot. Bubonic says New York State Troopers are some of the best troopers in the country, but DEC, uh, well, those guys can just be plain jerks. They got too much power because they're both state police and federal police. Romonger, the airship's mini is four feet long. When and how, oh, you're making the miniature. Oh, I got it. That's really cool. Uh, governor status here in the south is eight. A feared tyrant. No one gets away with things. All right. So the west and the south, right here, uh, west and the south, feared tyrants. Look at that. So that like this is that old school, right? Old tiefling. Like, no, you're gonna pay your your dock taxes, or we'll sh we'll sink your ship, or you're going to you know if you don't check in, you don't have a complete manifest. Um, oh, it it doesn't have this uh, this crate of dishes on your on your inventory. Well. Over it goes, or confiscated it is. Meanwhile, we then have uh, the greater, like that Mesomasca, the anonymous cabal, that's operating on the human side of the island over here. And so it is being ruled by like a subset of them. And in the north, you have someone who's being manipulated by others. So this could even be something like a tiefling governor, but is being manipulated by humans here in the, uh, in the east. See, we're, we're storytelling. We are building a character out of a location. It's exciting. We can do all this fun stuff as DMs. And when we, when we know it up here and when we know it in here, that conveys to your players. That conveys, wow, our DM knows what he's talking about. Or, oh, there's, an, there's a rich world around us that we can explore. And our DM has answers to these questions. When you're done, it'll come apart deck by deck so it can be usable in game. Oh, so you can get like some multi-deck fighting going on? Yeah, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Notable traits. Number eight. Headquarters of a powerful family or guild. Okay. Fourteen. Site of a mythic or magical event. Okay, definitely can work with that. North is six. A river divides the town. Okay, so we're going to have to make a little bit of a, ge a geographical adjustment. Nothing wrong with that. And then in the south, the notable trait is it's a major trade center. Okay. For the West and the South, it's known for the same thing. It's known for its gambling. The East is known for godlessness. Right? So we have this anonymous cabal. They're probably very secular. They're probably not concerned with religions and whatever. Especially if, if, as we're saying, what King was hinting at, this is a neutral territory and a neutral government. They don't, they're not pandering to religion. 
you know, they're here for coin, they're here for, you know, trade, they're here for all of these aspects. The North is known for uh, six. Wait, didn't I already have a, a river? Oh, it's a notable trait. Okay, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong chart. Yeah, six. Oh, it's known for flowers. So Florida, right? Flowers, Florida. <laughs> and each of the regions of Mesomasca has a little mini crisis going on under the umbrella of it's on the brink of war. The current calamity in the West is seven. There are corrupt officials. Now, East and South are sharing the same. A plague or famine. And the North. What's happening to the pretty little flowers going on in the North? Number one. A suspected vampire infestation. <laughs> cool. All right, then. Um, Bubonic says, you know, one of the biggest grapes about 5e I have, uh, I'm sorry, but I hate both Point Boy and Stat Array. When I envision a character, I usually throw those by the wayside. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, if, if that's your style of play and everyone consents to it and your DM says, yeah, that's fine. It's an option. Fifth edition does allow for that. I just find for what we're doing here, using a stat array, it's easy, it's predictable, um, in so much that you know the type of, like, you know the, the general characteristic that you're going to get, and you can build, and it will have, it will have weaknesses, it will have strengths, um, you know, along a, a distribution curve. But I, I agree, you know, uh, I think it was even at your prompting, Bubonic, that a couple weeks ago we made a random statted character, you know, for, uh, for funsies. 3D6 down the line. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's what we did, Bobicus. Although I think I, I re... Uh, it was three... Uh, or I'm sorry. It was... I think we did 4D6, drop the lowest, and you could re-roll ones once. Romonger says, no plagues. And uh, and your, your left arm is getting a little twitchy, isn't it, Romonger? <laughs> okay. Okay. So now what we can do, we've we've divided the island up, we've uh, we've gone through, and um, we can add little touches here and there. Uh, in fact, we needed to say that uh, there was a um, dum -da -da, corrupt officials. Dum -da -da, where was it? Ah, in the north, that there's a river that divides the town, and so we can even have. Um, maybe what we can do is, uh, do a little bit of, uh, what, uh, oh, come here. Let's get this. This kind of, whoop, not that color. This is kind of like leaking out of the mountain here. Because there's probably going to be tunnels that people can use for commerce, or for smuggling, or for a lot of things like that. And that water goes through someplace, and that means that if you're willing to get wet, you could run a smuggling operation. You can do a lot of interesting things. And this tunnel can just go all the way, right? Now, is it going to be a vast underdark system? It, it could be, I guess. Nothing necessarily wrong with that. Um, but if, it, if it's hit with a lot of weather, there's going to be a lot of water flowing through these mountains. There could be a lot of caves, a lot of caverns. You could set something like this up. Um, especially if you wanted to make kind of a claustrophobic dungeon or encounter. Um, encounters that test uh, your, the ability for your characters to hold their breath. 
in order to swim in underwater sections and things like that, this would be a great opportunity to have something along those lines. Jam Jam goes into the random Underdark. Speaking of the Underdark, a gas spore appears. 16 or greater, you attack normally with a plus 5. Can you do it? 15, look at that. 15 plus 5 is 20, that's greater. You win uh, 2,500 EXP, Jam Jam. Nice. Peru says, how has any civilization lasted here? It's just terrible people everywhere and vampires. <laughs> well, it has a very healthy tourism. <laughs> it's right, Peru. Every place is awful, no matter where you go. <laughs> you go to Jamaica and you're like, oh, look at these beautiful beaches. Um, look at the, my beautiful hotel. And you realize that, you know... A hundred feet around the property is razor wire fences to keep the locals out. And you're like, oh, this must not be the paradise that the hotel wants me to think it is or the cruise line thinks it is. And you get that anywhere. All right, so in the West, the governor's a feared tyrant. Uh, he is most likely going to be a tiefling. The headquarters of a powerful family or guild. So this would probably be the longshoremen or some other kind of uh, teamster. Known for gambling, so there's probably casinos. Um, so you can almost get like an old New Orleans kind of vibe, right? You know, it's on the salt water, lots of trade, there's a river going down, um, lots of uh, gambling, good times, <laughs> corrupt officials, and there's a permanent portal to another plane of existence. Um, so we could put that, I don't know, in one of these locations if we really want. To another plane hmm we could have a lot of fun with this we do have a warlock of the fiend and we do have a warlock to the great old one we could probably have it be kind of up here and so It's a little offshore, but there it is. In the east, uh, it, so it's this anonymous cabal. Uh, it's the site of a mystical or magical event. Um, so that, uh, so somewhere in the west here, something there's some site of some kind that occurred. And I wonder what we could have this be. So that's something to think about here. Known for its godlessness. Uh, so yeah, very, very neutral. Look, there's worship whatever you want. We're not into that. We're secular. We just want what's, what is our due. There is a plague or famine, and there is a haunted hill or a barrow mound. So let's draw something like that in. Uh, let's look at the lay of the land. So it, everything's starting here and at its high point along the ridge of the mountains and it's flowing outwards. We can, we can create these lines, imaginary, or we can type them in. We can create these lines that are the lay of the land coming out. Let's make the haunted barrow kind of, kind of at the midpoint of the river. A lot of people probably talk about it. And it something happened here. In fact, this could even be the site of whatever that mystical or magical event that occurred was. All right, north has the river that divides the town. It's known for flowers. So up here, there's there's still a lot of woodland that might not have been touched yet, or for whatever reason, the current. Right, you have the deep water, and then it kind of gets shallow. 
uh, these fields are probably filled with uh, all kinds of flowers. There's a suspected vampire infestation, and it's a wild magic zone. So that's probably why the flowers are so well known. Something has happened here that is causing this wild magic, and it's affecting the local wildlife, and maybe that's what's drawn the vampires to the north. Especially, hey, look at this. We have a weakling manipulated by others, so maybe this anonymous cabal has nothing to do with it. Maybe the governor has been undermined by a vampire. It can happen. In the south, the governor is a feared tyrant. Uh, this is a major trade center. Yep, that seems to reflect. There is a plague or famine going on. And there's also possibly a connection, right? If, we wanna, if we're DMs and we want to run a story for our players, there is a haunted, uh, like a hill or a mound or something along those lines. And we can say that... Um, maybe... Maybe it's out at sea. Maybe this island out here is considered haunted. Maybe by shipwrecks or something along those lines. So why don't we just paint this orange? Ooh, that is not orange. That is orange. There we go. And so there's some like some haunted sea activity going on here. And this haunted sea activity could be causing the plague or the famine. Just as we look at... Um, Look at this. Boom. Plague or Famine, Haunted Hill or Barrow Mound. Plague or Famine, Haunted Hill or Barrow Mound. Random. Hello. We're making a story. We got this as DMs. Don't be afraid to make to subject yourself to this content. Here's a mystery. Point A, point B. Make a line. Bada boom. Forget about it. We got it good. The story writes itself. <laughs> And then overarching all this is is that Mes Mesomasca as a whole has m very important things that it needs to you know work on or be aware of, right? So the ruler of Mesomasca is this mysterious anonymous cabal. It has a sinister reputation. Well, heck, if we have a suspected vampire infestation, we have plagues and famines, haunted hills. Yes. Um, if we have two governors that are tyrants, yes. It's known for delicious cuisine. Mwah. Very good blood, apparently. <laughs> very good flowers. Very good vegetables that are produced in the wild magic zone. Providing, you know, you get purple zucchinis and, uh, and they taste like carrots. Or you get, you know, eggplants the size of uh, prize-winning pumpkins. Things like that. The current calamity, it's on brink, it's on the brink of war. Now, that's an external thing to the region, but it could be on the brink of war, of a, of a slight civil war, because there is, uh, there's, um, you know, the racial majority are seen as conquerors. Now, it doesn't say that there's mistrust or that there's, like, open racial hostility, but that could always be an underlying factor. And then the weird locale here is there's a canyon containing a dragon's graveyard, which is in its own way, is that really that far from being from having a haunted hill or barrow mound in our other picture here. And this is where the dragon graveyard is, is off the coast this way. So Side of a mythical or magical event that could also be the dragon graveyard if we're saying that this is over like this could be disputed maybe the governor of the south and the governor of the east are both claiming parts of course the east is going to win if this is the seat of power on mesomasca um though that could also go be why there's tension between the east um or wh why he's a feared tyrant because he's trying to prove himself harsh i can manage my tip of the mask here i can put down you know this uh this plague and it could also be plague from shipped items right diseased rats it could be poison food it could be all sorts of things 
there you go you're a dm we just created a, a miniature campaign setting that you can run whatever you want supernatural um or natural but super natural undeath disease you can have a religious conflict because uh because the mate the seat of power is known for its godlessness plague and famine uh are are problems on this island all kinds of adventure hooks and then when you look at the greater region you say oh wow i can assemble a team of players from all around here and then I want to focus it on Mesomasco, or you go to the other territories, and we can do that very easily. This stuff just writes itself. You, you got to be open to it. You got to just throw something at the wall, and you know it'll stick. It won't stick, and you can connect the dots from there. It's it's not too terrible, uh, not too terribly difficult a thing to do. So there we go. We have a uh, we have a, a pretty decent close up map. We've we've seeded it with some more detail. We've seeded it with culture. We've seeded it with conflict, and we've seeded it especially as we have now these characters: Grimhildr von Ale, warlock of the Fiend; Rakami Thunderdrums, who was a uh, a bard who just sort of like was reclusive on this island, maybe somewhere else. Who knows? And then we have our character, our new tiefling warlock character who doesn't have a name yet, but he's a great old one warlock. He's seeking something. He's asking questions. He bluntly talks to people. He's looking. The low are lifted up and the high and mighty are brought down. Changes the nature of things. And he's selfish enough to bring it about to kill people that are necessary. And he wants to know who's in charge here because it's a mysterious cabal. city secrets so he could have grown up in the in the seat of power you know if we're saying that uh if we're saying that this this city right here with uh, high rises condos it's a high population density he might have grown up here and he knows the island well and he could have even communed through the portal um grim hilder maybe was the one who communed through the portal maybe the portal is actually just a point where different patrons can communicate now we have two patrons that are possibly working against each other. A neutral, evil, fiendish warlock. A lawful, evil, great old one warlock. They both want the same thing. What's going to happen? It's going to be interesting. Got a cat here. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Bubonic, holy cow, this guy's turning out to be so good. The dice are being very, very, very good and letting me do a very good background for this guy. I'm glad. Okay, so I'm going to get up and I'm going to take another break. We've been going for about three hours now. Um, good, strong session, like lots of motivation, lots of ideas going out there. I really appreciate it. It, it has been a lot of fun to make this uh, with you all. And of course, if you have any other things that you want to bring up, you want to suggest something, you know, King was saying that this is going to be like a, like a Manhattan Island, right? A very high population density. It, in fact, the city might even just follow, um, you know, the, the, uh, the river down. There's nothing wrong with that. We can do that. It can be very metropolitan on this side. And then a little bit more, you know, uh, a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I'm going to go AFK for a little bit. I'll be back, you know, five to ten minutes, something along those lines. And we'll go from there.